Hi guys, this is Nigel from Gatsu Gamers reporting for the sec from the second day of Dreamhack Masters Book Race. Join here by Thais, who arrived last night and we, we catch him now, now early in the morning. So, Thais, how do you like Book Race so far? Yeah, I really enjoyed here. I arrived uh, a bit late yesterday, but so I was a bit tired, so I took my sleep, slept really well, and yeah, I, I visited a bit of Bucharest uh, yesterday, but today I'm here in the to play the tournament, and I'm excited. Where did you go in Bucharest? Uh, just a bit in the city to eat something and just visiting, not not to a specific point. Did you see all the the Halloween costumes? It was like parades in the center. Yeah, I saw someone, and it was it was funny to watch. <laughs> Do you have this in like the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah, it's really big in the Netherlands too. Okay, so um, you're here at the tournament, you'll play um, in the afternoon, obviously, do you, do you feel prepared? Have you submitted your decks already? Mm. Uh, I submitted my decks uh, this morning. Uh, they, I had it already ready before the tournament because I practiced, I, I practiced good for it. Well, I had some really, uh, I, had, I have a really bu busy schedule with uh, the tournaments that I had to play l this week and last week. So it was hard to really prepare well, but I think I have a really good strategy now. Yeah, this is your third offline event for this month. Like you were in Seed Story Cup, then Gamers Origins. Now you're here, and obviously, you know, for, for these tournaments, you have to prepare a lot. We were talking to Lauder, and he was saying how this is, you know, one, one of the most difficult things in in Hearthstone, basically, to prepare for an offline event. How how do you feel your deck preparation has changed between each of those events? Uh, well, every event has a really uh, different format, so that is important to you. You, you first want to think about the format and what the format is and what is a good strategy for it. So, for example, last week I was in French, but it has no band format, and that is a way different strategy than when you come into Bucharest where you haven't band format. And the first thing that I do is that I want to make a strategy for what is a good thing to ban, and then I want, then I can make my decks because it's hard to practice on the ladder for this tournament because uh, you go with the decks and you have a strategy with the decks you you are banning a class what makes your what makes some you you don't want to play with every card because so it yeah it makes uh, it makes it way different and i think that just practicing with friends and going into this format practicing with my team for especially with radu and skip that is really good for uh, this tournament um. Speaking of strategy, you were known, like in the early days of Hearthstone, like the guy that wins every other Zoda, you were really big in Open Cups. And I remember like I did an interview with you back then and you were talking about how you need to predict your opponent like in different rounds of the tournament. But uh, now, nowadays you don't play that many Open Cups, like you mostly focus on big events. So how did you ha have to change your uh, preparation and mentality and play style, you know, to to transition away from weekly cup winnings to big tournaments? Uh, the biggest difference is actually that um, in the Open Cups uh, you can expect a lot. There is always a meta but you can expect a lot and it's just important to go with uh, the best decks and good decks against the meta. For example, you, now you have in Open Cups you need to have something against Hunter. Yep. And in uh, this tournament, it is uh, there. You have, you have, re you have in tournaments. You have really a meta. I feel that there is just uh, two or three classes are always popular. So my mindset always goes to these uh, classes and try to beat them. Uh, speaking of meta, we were talking with Alish, who lost round one yesterday, and uh, he was really, you know, I, I don't want to say solely, but. He was really, you know, um, uh, how do I say, like, an annoyed. No, no, he was annoyed about the fact that he had to face a turn three Undertaker that was 5 6. So this led to another, uh, another whole other discussion about the power of Undertaker and how, how it shifts the meta. So um, we, I think I spoke to some players at House Cup about the, the card, but we didn't go into any detail. And there's been like a lot of theory how, how or if should the, car, the card should be changed. What do you think about it? It's like, because obviously we see it in priests, hunters, zoo, like every mid-range deck uses it and it's kind of like, it reminds me of what novice engineer was back in the days. Where do you stand on the card? Um, yeah, my feeling with Undertaker, it is, it is not really a broken card because it, you can handle it really well early, but if you can't handle it, it snowballs too hard. That's a bit how I feel it. And, I don't think it is broken in any class except Hunter. In Sue, it is a bit. It's also really strong. 
and Priest, Priest has an issue with the Undertaker because it's hard for them. To, they run some death rattle cards, but it's harder for them to buff them. And the only, the, yeah, the Hunter can really buff it really crazy sometimes with the web spinners, leper gnomes, and yeah, then it's it snowballs a bit too hard. I'm I'm not sure if if there is a way to really change it well because if, if I feel like if you change something with the buff. It will be a bit. Uh, it won't. It won't be strong enough that they, that people don't play it anymore. So, I have no. I have. No, I didn't really thought about it. I. I don't see it as a big issue actually. I, I. It is. It is really strong, but that is because of the snowball effect. And I feel more cards have the same strategy with the snowball. So. Do you think like if classes get more early game removals, it would be like a more balanced card because you have more options to remove it? Yeah, I think for some classes this is a really big issue because they don't have the the early removal. That is why you see uh, people using uh, Warrior and Priest now as mostly the counters for the Hunter, just because they have an early removal. And for, uh, for the Druids, Paladins, Mages, they only have one card most of the times to to get rid of the Undertaker. And I feel like they're that is a good example how you can um, make the card a bit more balanced. But yeah, there if the pro Blizzard probably has to change maybe a bit a bit just on the snowball effect of the Undertaker. Uh, are there any cards that you see that have the uh, the same potential problem? You know, break the meta. We haven't seen uh, a lot of these yet. But you know, Sludge Belcher uh, was a card that basically revived many of the control decks, and now you know Undertaker is a, a strong advocate for aggro and mid-range decks. Is there like another card that hasn't been yet, um, you know, made an appearance that you think will you know cause meta problems or meta shifts? I feel I still think uh, Low Tap is a really big card that is a bit underrated. Maybe while well, everyone is, you see it in almost every deck just yeah. because it isn't. 5-5 five, five, and it has really strong uh, uh, effect by so you can't kill low, uh, low tap uh, if you don't have a board and it is also a really good card for the slit belchers and cards like that because it trades really well uh, but I don't think there is except I think low tap is also but it is a card that if you can because you can't remove it it snowballs hard but for the rest, I don't think there are really broken cards with the last Next Remus. I really like that uh, the new cards from Next Remus. It changed it a lot, and it's it really. Uh, before Next Remus, it was hard to play some classes, but almost every class is playable now. So I really like, uh, and I really I'm really excited if there are coming new cards in the future. We see Hogger making an appearance. Like Logan is playing Hogger in Druid, and we've seen Shaw playing. Uh, Hogger in Warrior on Leather, what do you think about the card? Is it like just a meta tag to counter like Hunters and Zoo or is it like a card that can stay? Uh, I think that I still, uh, I don't think Hogger will stay in this. It is popular now because, yeah, the, it, it is just here now, but it is like, it is really good against Hunter. There is no way I can discuss that, but I think in every other matchup it is just it is it is really weak, and if, for example, if it goes a bit bit more to control, then the Karen will be way more popular. It is it is just way better than the Hogger, but Hogger is a really good card against the Hunter, and that is because the meta is really focused on Hunter. That is why you see Hogger now. But when that disappears, I think that Hogger won't be that popular anymore. Okay, um, I want to you know throw, throw some questions about you now. Um, so you've been in MYM for some time now. How are things in the team currently? Uh, I think that uh, I'm really happy with MYM. It was my, uh, it was one of the first team that came into Hearthstone. But with uh, Radu and with Skip and Kunzi and Anton, uh, we have a really good team. I think we practice as one of the best teams uh, together. We practice if we can. We try to practice almost every evening. So we really try to uh, improve ourselves and. Yeah, we, we we I think we yeah I think we just prepare really good and better than other teams. You you recently lost Ignite and Blazing Glorious teammates. How did this affect the team? Um, it was uh, it was a bit hard. Uh, Blazing had some issues and was just not uh, he was just not playing uh, as much anymore. But yeah, Ignite was still a good uh, teammate and it was a bit uh, sad that we lost him. But we're still talking a bit with him and uh, he all we still practice a bit with him together. So, so uh, speaking of teams, you will be playing in the NEL, the Chinese league, uh, as part of Liquid and Friends. So you will be playing together with Savis, Monk, and Nerea. 
So you haven't been in a team with any of those. Um, how do you feel you will work with the guys? Uh, I think I work really well. I know uh, the team manager from them, uh, he's Dutch too. I talk a lot with Monk. I have good contact with Savic and also I, ha I met N Narea at DreamX Stockholm where I had a lot of fun with him and could talk really well. So I think it will fit really well and uh, I don't think there will be any issue because I know every one of them already and we are all good together. Uh, how do you feel like the, the, the team stands in terms of chance in the league? Because you know, I was talking to uh, one of the, the Chinese teams, Yellow Miracle. You know, a few days ago we did an interview with them. Um, they should be up like soon. So, and uh, I remember it's like a situation that happened in StarCraft 2. Like when um, I think a year or two ago, Team Liquid and EG met an alliance, and they went to compete against the Koreans in their pro league. And it was supposed to be, you know, their, you know, breakout moment and show the Koreans what they can do. But they ended up being destroyed. So it's kind of like the, the similar situation. I mean, obviously, NEL hasn't started yet, but it feels the same. Like you, you have a foreign team that's thrown in, like, into the Chinese waters, mm -hmm. and you know, China is very undercovered. Uh, you know, we don't know what what they're playing, and they're you know for their wacky decks or whatever. So, how do you feel you will do? Uh, I have to say what you said already. Uh, China is a bit unknown for me. I I know uh, some players and I know a bit what they play, and uh, but it's really hard. I don't have much information about them, and I I go into the tournament with I will, we will just play our own strategy. We think that we are a really strong team, so we can get a really good result out of it. But it's yeah, it is hard to prepare for them. Would you say that if you were like a proper team and not just you know a uh, congregation of four people from various teams you will do better like for example if it was MYM with your regular ro roster and not just these four guys in the league with the friends uh, well you know, then you know already then you know each other already a bit better but we we are tr we uh, are trying to practice now also together a bit and uh, going into the tournament with a good strategy so I think after uh, because it's with Blitzcon and Dream and Bucharest it's a bit uh, buzzy now for us yep. but after that we yeah we're just gonna uh, go together and we'll make a good strategy and go into that we feel at least comfortable and I think that we can make a really good result in the Chinese tournament. I'm hoping to, to see some good games. You're opening against Yolo Miracle in the first match I think. So and I know the guys they're really cool and I, I'm hoping to see some good games. Um, so you're university now right? Mm -hmm. Yeah still at the university. <laughs> what are you studying? Uh, business economics. Uh, so yeah. Do you want to go like in, into economics after you graduate, or like Hearthstone is the thing to do? Uh, that is something I really think about now. Uh, I have no idea what will come up. I am in the third year now, so I really want to finish it. So, like, it's you. You don't want to break your school uh, if you are so far already. So I just want to finish my school, and after that, I'm uh, just gonna look what the, what the options are and. I, I, I'm not someone that goes really, that looks really well, uh, looks in the future. I will just see what comes, how it goes, and maybe uh, uh, after my internship, I will just take a time out and just go in here into Hearthstone. Maybe not. I will just see how it goes, actually. Uh, does Hearthstone interfere with your studies a lot? Sorry? Does Hearthstone interfere with your studies a lot? Mm, no, not that much. Uh, what do you mean? I, you like, I mean, uh, playing Hearthstone, does it, you know, hurt your studying, like, in the university? Like, uh, you know, maybe you, you don't study so much for exams or whatever? Well, uh, I'm doing my internship now, a half a year in internship, and it is really hard to combine, I have to say that, because I have to work 32 hours a week. And, yeah, for example, now I left already on Friday, so I really have to make my hours on Monday to Tuesday, and it gets you really tired, and you want to practice in the evenings, but then, yeah, if you work so much and you fly and you play tournaments, it's, you also need your sleep, and I think sleep is really important also for tournaments. So uh, it, it, it hurts my internship a bit, but I have a really cool boss, and he, <laughs> he is really okay with it, and, yeah. It is just an internship, and I learn a lot of it. And I just uh, when I'm when I don't have to play tournaments, I work a bit more. And when I play tournaments, I work a bit less. My boss, my boss is okay with that. So, yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so let's say you you don't go for for Hearthstone in the future, and you stay in economics. What do you want to work? Oh wow! Big boss. Like. <laughs> well. Um, 
yeah, maybe something uh, just in a company like a manager or maybe something that does uh, that does analysts or making uh, yeah making reports or something like that. But I I just I'm so young. I have so much ways that I can go. I will see how it goes. Uh, I don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, man. Thanks for the interview. Um, uh, any last words? No, uh, thanks for the interview and yeah, now uh, let's go into the DreamHack Bucharest and let's make a good tournament here. Okay guys, this was Nether from Gossu Gamers. Follow us at Gossu Gamers HS and follow this guy at Thais HS. Yes. Yes, so he's awesome. Make sure to cheer for him.